Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards and in this lesson number 168 uh, we'll take a look at architecture decision records and how they relate to architectural stories. Uh, you can get a listing of all the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday on my website at developertoarchitect.com slash lessons. Way back in Lesson 55, I actually talked about architecture decision records, uh, what they are, the usefulness, and kind of how to write those. I then had another couple of lessons I did about managing architecture decisions, as well as incorporating ADRs, or architecture decision records, into existing systems. Uh, the, these three lessons uh, would be good to go back to if you already haven't looked at those, uh, kind of before looking at this lesson. Now, I also recorded a lesson 106, uh, kind of introducing the concept of what I call an architecture story. Uh, this is like a user story, only it's done in the spirit of architecture and structure as opposed to user functionality. What I want to do in this lesson is show the relationship between an architecture story and architecture decision records. And by the way, this lesson came from a most excellent question regarding this kind of relationship. So let's start with the architecture decision record. Uh, let's say that we have a payment service and this accepts uh, payments for a particular order in our system. Uh, People could pay with Visa, PayPal, gift card, and so on. But we have plans of expanding significantly uh, the number of kind of payment options or payment types that we can have. In other words, reward points, PayPal, or on WorldPay, maybe it's Apple Pay. And so we would need to add these to the existing payment service. Also, uh, we expect and, and kind of predict uh, a lot of change with regards to gift cards and rewards points and kind of fine-tuning those based on some changing requirements. This is a lot of effort in this single payment service. So my idea is that if we were to break up this single payment service into different and separate microservices, each one corresponding to a specific payment type. It would then make it faster and easier to be able to add additional payment types because we're not impacting any of the other payment types, but also helps facilitate the change of payment types because those changes are isolated to a specific deployment unit. So I analyzed the pros and cons and the trade-offs and make the decision that it makes sense to break apart the payment service to be able to facilitate all these upcoming changes. Well, let's write an architecture decision record for that decision. And here it is right here, ADR 33, which is separate services for each payment type. Uh, the status is accepted. Now, the context actually then describes my scenario. Customers can currently pay for an order using a credit card, PayPal, or gift cards. All current processing is done by a single service. We'll call that the payment service. Uh, notice we have plans to include several other payment types and expect a lot of change in gift cards and reward points. Our options are to add the new payment types to the existing single service and also make those modifications or break apart the single service, one for each payment type. Well, my decision is we will use separate services for each payment type. In the architecture decision record, in the, just, in the decision section, uh, I add my justification. Um, having, having separate services offers better architectural extensibility, uh, making it easier and faster to add new payment types to the system. Also, it gives better overall agility, uh, that maintainability, testability, and deployability when making changes to existing payment types because the payment code is isolated to a single deployment unit and other payment types uh, won't be impacted during maintenance and deployment. 
seems like a very sound decision. And in this case, it is. But there are consequences because we do need to break up the existing payment database. It's one of the trade-offs here into separate schemas to form uh, a tight physical bounded context for those microservices. Now, we did analysis and the existing tables are already separated by payment type and there's really no shared tables. So we don't anticipate that this is going to be a large effort. But also there is some shared code that exists between the payment type functionality and that will have to be needed to be moved to a shared library. Okay, so that's our architecture decision record. Now that's documented, but we also have now an architecture story that we need to write. And this was kind of introduced in that lesson 104. But the big question for this lesson is what's the relationship between an architecture decision record and a story card? Aren't they really one and the same? Well, it turns out that they are in fact two separate artifacts. You see the ADR, the architecture decision record, documents and justifies my decision. Whereas the architecture story card, it's a corresponding actionable artifact. The decision itself shows that it's accepted, but hasn't really been scheduled yet. And that's what the architecture story card is all about. Now, let me show you the other relationship between these. So let's write an architecture story. So as an architect, now I do like starting my architecture story cards uh, with as an architect instead of a specific user. Uh, what it does is it identifies that this particular story is structural in nature and will help facilitate other kinds of initiatives. So as an architect, what do I want to do? Well, I want to break apart the existing single payment service into separate services, one for each payment type. Interestingly enough, that part of the story card comes directly from, from the architecture decision. So when we're writing the architecture story card, we could go back to our ADR, look at the decision, and that's what I want to do as an architect. Now, why am I doing this? Let's go back to the story card. I want to break apart to increase architectural extensibility and agility when adding and modifying payment types. Well, it turns out that that part of the story card comes from our justification statements. It's rewritten to be more concise, but what we also do with the architecture story card is we add a reference to that architecture decision record. And that way we can go back to that ADR for more information, further qualifications of that justification. But the point is that the ADR feeds the text for that particular architecture story card. Now, let's look at the back of the architecture story card because this is where our conditions of satisfaction come in. These are the additional pieces of information. And as a matter of fact, we have to give some additional guidance to the developers who will be implementing this architecture story. For example, each service should have its own database schema. Uh, we need to create new API endpoints and common code should be moved to a custom shared library. All of these conditions of satisfaction uh, in the story card actually come from the consequences section of the ADR. So again, once we write an ADR, we can feed uh, the corresponding architecture decision record. And now we can kind of see the relationship between an architecture decision record and its corresponding architecture story card. For larger architecture decisions, uh, rather than that story card, that might be an architectural epic that may generate additional architecture stories, in which case we can still tie all of those back using the reference um, over to the specific ADR that story or epic happens to reference. So fantastic question. I'm so glad um, somebody asked that because it allowed me to really show how these two architectural artifacts really uh, work together uh, to be able to not only document architecture decision and justify it, but have 
an actionable, actionable uh, artifact that we can use for iteration planning and resource planning. So this has been Lesson 168, ADRs and Architecture Stories. Uh, please stay tuned in two more weeks for another lesson in Software Architecture Monday.